Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another adventure. Myself, Gav Cuthbertson, and the man of Geffen Dunn. We've uh, headed up to North Wales today for a spot of tote fishing. I mean, that's the main target. Geff's got his little pollock rod up at the minute, but myself and Gav left around half past ten last night and uh, literally got up to Geffen for about quarter past twelve. Four hours later, about four o'clock in the morning, we got to our chosen venue. There was a car out of van already there, so uh, we ended up going down anyway, but the mark we wanted Someone had been here since last night and uh, spent the night on it. So we are a little bit to the left hand side of where we needed to be, but it's quite tight. I mean, you've got three rods out in here, we've got a tri tripod set up to the left hand side, but it's very tight. It's not, it's not very comfortable, but condition wise, it's, it's absolutely perfect, I'm told, for this area. So, first journey up for me and Gav to, uh, to North Wales. Something I haven't done before, Cookie's neck of the woods really, it's a mark, I know what James has cut, fished many times and had some great success on here with uh, taupe. I know Stewie Norris has also had a half decent taupe off here and also Dan Bassett, you know what I mean? So I think they, they both had 40s, which is, which is, a, good, is a good taupe for uh, this neck of the woods. So um, yeah, we're happy having a go. So yeah, Geff's clubbing away board at the minute, waiting for the tide and he's got his pollock rod on for the little float and I am about to bait up a nice tote rig so basically pulley rigs so we've got a hundred pound rig body uh, yeah a hundred pound rig body going on to a seven ounce uh, Namex lead and an imp on the bottom some people like to use imp some people like to use uh, the uh, solo clips I'm, I'm a fan of the imp really I know you, they tend to unclip sometimes but I think half the time if it's set up well, I've just had a eel on this one as you can see with a slime um, but uh, yeah I've, I've took him off and released him and we've been here probably a couple of hours now fished from low water fishing the uh, flood and then, uh, as I'm told by Mr. Durham, it's high water and on the ebb we want. Uh, as it approaches high water and that tide changes direction, hopefully, How deep? we can get in there. Jeff's doing a little bit of float fishing in a minute, but we've got some fantastic, uh, fantastic mackerel there from uh, Hooker's Baits. Little joeys, what I brought up. And uh, yeah, here we go. So basically what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take the macro like that and I'm going to cut it like so, okay? And then basically I'm going to do exactly the same again. And I'm going to cut it like that. So it goes into a V, okay? Then I'm going to take my hook. I'm going to go for the back head, head of the macro, okay? It's down in like that. Right, I'm going to bring it right the way down. See the blood's come out of already. Like so. So that's the eight. That's an eight O specimen extra there. Bait elastic. Okay, so I've got my bait elastic. So I'm simply going to bind that hook on. Some people use massive, massive baits. I don't. At the end of the day, it comes across that. It's going to snap that up and just and run. And that's what I want it to do. I don't want it to muck around. I want it to take the bait. I don't know if you can see that, that's uh, knotable wire from American Fishing Wire and uh, I've got that set down with a little bit of uh, shrink tubing just to protect the uh, knot on the bottom. I'm going to go up all the way up to the top end now, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my wire out like so. Yeah. The little bits I'm taking off, as Gav's just picking up there now, is perfect for Geffen for his little uh, pollock floats. So that's what I'm going to do, take that off, right? So I've got a circle work here now. And I'm going to bring that to the top. It's literally sit him to where I need to set him. One, two, three. Bring him around like so. And that's, that's basically it. So you can see there, yeah? S little small compact bait. And these taupe will just hammer that if they come across it. I 
with them. So we've got the specimen extra on the bottom, circle work on the top, and then uh, a lot of bait elastic. The round just hold them into place. So I'm going to blast this one out to the horizon now and see if we can get one out. We're waiting for that tide really, so it's a little bit of play, playing around at the minute, but uh, fingers crossed we can get one out of there. I'm going to basically put a bait out now to the uh, left hand side of us. As I said, I just had a kneel on that one a minute ago and I felt as we were coming along close, we had to bully it up through the kelp. But, uh, yeah, see if we can get one out then. See if we can get one out. To the cast from. To the from here, I'll just chuck out to the left. Just touch bottom now. Just a second touch it now, eh, mate? <laughs> There's a jellyfish there trying to go through uh, Geffen's. Don't think we'll make it out. But there's a jellyfish, blue jellyfish down there. Right in the close he is. Just had a spider makes lovely eating. We're getting back there now. I don't really fancy carrying that all the way back up. I think this one here, this one is swinging around to the right too much for trouble, and it's hitting that the line's hitting that uh, rock. Up here, then. Absolutely fantastic day. I mean, the scenery around here is uh, superb. Really beautiful coastline. Five pound main line. I'll bring this one in this way. Twenty-five pound main line, eighty pound shock leaders. As I say, we are very tight where we are. We just met at the end of the day. Just got it's an, a long way for us to come. We couldn't get, we couldn't have left any quicker. I mean, especially coming up here, we sort of knew we had to be on the rock early. But unfortunately. There was uh, other people had better ideas. Fair play to them because there's no way I've been sleeping in a van all night, like, you know what I mean? It's a long old night. But uh, hopefully it can pay off. So you can, all you can wish for at the end of the day is pot luck, innit? Tides are right, conditions are right, baits are right, so the fish are there. I've got to be honest, 
I'm hoping to break my cherry. I am hoping to break my cherry because uh, I've had two tall pond before in the past, fishing off North Devon. Now, if I was up North, De North Devon now, I'd be happy with a 20 pound tope. I would be happy with a 20 pound tope. Up here, I want a 40 plus. Um, just for how hard it is fishing on the North Devon coastline compared to what it is here. I mean, it's like, um, they do get a lot of tope up around this way. But uh, it's, it's, it's one of them at the end of the day. I'd be, be happy to see any of us get one out. I think Gav's had, Gav's had a couple of North Devon tope in the past. I think Gav's had a few uh, North Wales and West Wales tope, so. Fish on? Okay. Yeah, pass your rod, pass your rod. Okay, back to the drawing board. Is that noise? He did, didn't he? Okay then, so, back to the drawing board once again. I'm gonna get some of this uh, lovely macro out. And uh, see if we can get one out. Exactly the same again, I'm gonna sort of cut this one long ways now. Like so. Yuck. Really not liking this bait elastic I've got here today. It's the only one I had at. Oh, I'm gonna have a look at my bag a minute, see if I've got a different one, because that is quite thick. I don't like thick bait, bait elastic. What ones have we got here? I think that's the same one, isn't it? We will have a look, we will have a look. Nope, that will do. That will do. Okay, so. I'm gonna clean this wire off quickly. Like so. Right. I'm going to get the hook, it's like the same again, I'm going to bring him through the head, and right down the bottom of the head, right, like that, take this lovely bait elastic I've got here now, it's a bit more finer, probably have to do a few more turns of it, but, I'm just not a fan of big heavy duty, you know what I mean, it's, Like so, a few bits of juices coming out through. I'm going to put that around once more time, so that's around three times there then. And that's going to come out in the top end of it and out through the top end of the macro. And then I'm just going to bind him on then. to bash, that's what it the sense to come out of it naturally really. There it is. Ready for casting. So let's get another one out then. Mine, isn't it? Yeah. Webs, it's all fight. Is he on you ain't more? No. 
Okay. It's not a tub. Probably dogfish. Feel nothing. What's all bite with it? Dogfish. Leave them there a minute, I think. Alright. Who did you pass that to? Out in front of you. But he's gone down. <laughs> See if we can get this bait out here in a minute. out Very important to set the drag here. Fucking hell. Lovely jubbly. See if we can get one out. <laughs> there you go. Here we are, Gav. 
lovely fine mackerel bait. Going up to Wally Amount now. So you'll see in a minute that what we're doing here because it is a case of really using the uh, using the conditions and surroundings we got to work as a team really. to the deep, deep blue. Very deep up there, guys. Nice cast. Hopefully, give you that taupe he's after. Keep up. Okay then. So when you get bored and you're taupe fishing, this here is what it's all about, isn't it, Gaff? Uh, yeah, I love the pollock. Bit of pollock fishing, eh, boy? Bit of pollock fishing. On the float. He's in. Is he in? Yeah. Woohoo! Oh, small. Oh, yeah, maybe. He's catching my bait here, he is. Catching my bait, eh, Gaff? Let's have a bit of fun. Of course you have. That's what it's all about, mate. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Well, mate. Yeah, mine's doing the same. I'm just trying to watch it. The only thing you got to watch is that the line on the thing. Mine kept on it in the thing a minute ago. It's working anyway, isn't it? Set them out. Thing is, you may have to juggle a little bit. It'll be right. Yeah, it'll be right. He's took that deep gaff, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, Fancy singing a little song for the, uh, the viewers? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> He's lying, he loves a little sing-along. Whose <sighs> reel is that, yours? Gav's reel going off, there's loads and loads of tide where we are, are at the moment. There's also a lot of pots as well, which isn't brilliant. Beat when I check the back. I'll use it. Oh, they're pulling back, mate. Let's, let's see him go back to fight another day. A bit, bit big. There he goes. Off to fight another day. So I'll the bottom. Get on, boy. Look how clear that water is. Fantastic. Yeah.
shall begin once again. Right, I'm going to do a bait up. Just got to keep keep going, keep keep going. We are. So uh, we've got, I think we've got 60. Yeah, hi, yeah, you right? Are you <laughs> Talking this little camera right here. Um, yeah, I think we got all together 80, 80 mackerel. So uh, I'm just hoping with that 80 mackerel we have, we can see a fish. So there you go. What I'm gonna do. Cut the mackerel down in half like that. Bait sizes, like so. Gonna go for a scent bait. So I'm gonna match up to the size of the bluey I have here. Cut that in like that. All right, I've got two baits there then. And I'm gonna basically cut this bluey in half again, okay? I was told a tip many years ago by a um, North Devon lad who, um, he's had a fair few tope out and that and um, he was telling me that a lot of people tend to fish massive baits like whole, whole mackerel and joeys and stuff like that but the trouble is with that they can be a pain to cast so uh, the two runs I've had okay both come on similar baits to what I'm doing now right but the only difference being is whiting because of North Devon and then that time, the time of year whiting is a killer bait especially for taupe and at the end of the day they're scavengers you know what I mean I remember like uh, a few people I've been fishing with who hit into them like onto like like small mackerel fillets they're not necessarily just going for whole big baits you know what I mean but it just enables you to cast a bit further at the same time. Now, where we're fishing at the moment, the tide is ripping through. I've got an eight ounce lead for it on, but um, I'm going for scent now. The shark at the end of the day. So I'm gonna go for scent. For a trace. So what, because of the way the bluey it holds, I'm gonna pull it through the mackerel side. So I'm come up the side there then, as so, all right. Actually, pull him out like that, and then get some more uh, bait elastic. Hook point important to be proud in any type of fishing you do, especially this. It's like going for a big smooth round at the end of the day. See the scent on my hands now, that's going to be trickling down the tide. Hopefully, will produce me a fish. All right. So that's dripping, and I mean dripping with scent. I'm going to climb up to the rock tip now and I am going to literally launch him fair left and then hopefully he holds round straight in front of the tide. So let's try and get one out. Right, I'm going to go and get this one up to the horizon. That is absolutely spilling out of scent. And uh, I'm just hoping that that can be the one I'm after. Got it? There we go. I've just got to watch it now because the water's coming in below me and I haven't got studs on and obviously footing is very important. The last thing you want to be doing on these rocks is slipping over. As soon as they get wet it is. Let's get one out then.
Push right, go. Well, that, that last one wasn't as bad as I thought. I thought it was like thingy. It, it was still out there. Is a hot bloody shore power Evo, and uh, this is matched up with a Penn Spinfisher, I believe. Is it? No, it's Battle Two. Battle Two. Little uh, Tronics Pro float, 30 gram. Little small work. We're gonna go and go for some Pollock. Okay. So, uh, to be honest, especially when you're doing this type of fishing, you got your big rods out. You can quite enjoy. What I tend to do, give them a good flick out over the top of the rough. I'm going to tell you a little something about tote fishing. It's overrated. <laughs> Well, we've been here for, I don't know, a few hours now. As you can see behind us here, it's absolutely perfect conditions. And I mean absolutely perfect conditions. Loads of tide, flat calm. There's five of us on the rocks here at the minute. And um, not a single sight of a fish. But as Geth will tell you, it's top fishing, mate, isn't it? It's all about that one run and we're waiting for it. But we've got a long trip back. Me and Gav's got work first thing in the morning. So uh, we don't want to be back too late for 10 o'clock. So we're going to leave here around two o'clock. It's going to take us about an hour to get back to the car. And we've thrown everything at it so far. We bait after bait after bait. I think we had, how many mackerel out have we had? Woo! 40 each to start off with. So we had 120 mackerel between us. Um, just in case things got going. <laughs> He's had a few pollock out, me and Gav's had a strap and a few dogfish. And um, yeah, nothing to shout about in a minute. But it can all change on that one run. So we're waiting for it, we're waiting for it. But a uh, little bit of breeze. Normally, we can give forecasts, it's slightly in northeasterly, I think, isn't it? You can feel a little bit of the breeze coming over the, over the headland where we are. Surprising or not, we are south facing, which uh, is quite surprising really, isn't it? Yeah. Being in North Wales, you wouldn't think it. But we've got all of the views over Snowdonia, which will be very going to very shortly. Gaffin was saying to us about the size of them, you don't get to see the size of them until you actually see them in real life. And uh, they are units, and I mean units. But yeah, we're going to give it our all. We've got a few hours yet. I think it's, what, well, it's got to be 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock. I'll tell you what time it is now. 10 past 12. 10 past 12, so we've got nearly two hours now to try and get a fish out. I hear the back tide is where it's at. Fingers crossed, but same with everything, guys. Count catch all the time. And uh, obviously, it's been a long adventure for me and Gav. Geth does this quite frequently. It's only for like four hours for him, so it's local enough in Geth's book. <laughs> It's quite local for you, isn't it? You do, you do this quite a lot, don't you? But for us, it's like six hour drive. It's like going, to, going up to Yorkshire. So it's something that I would rather do on like a weekend, really. But absolutely beautiful scenery, lovely coastline, very clean and tidy. Um, you can see, I don't see a fair many, many anglers, but it's all kept clean and tidy. The marks where we've been on. And um, 
it's just a shame really well, there's a lot of rough ground and unfortunately you get guys who don't really know what they're doing coming up to this sort of venues with like 80 to 100 pound braid and I'm not saying that everything like you lose mono and everybody's going to get like snagged up and stuff like that but after time mono will obviously just brittle out wouldn't it and just turn to nothing it gets yeah but braid won't braid what we'll do, it will do is just sit there and cause artificial reefs now a lot of the like when we went up to scarborough it was all like a lot of the anglers up there use braid because it's really really rough kelpie conditions but there is no reason whatsoever to be using braid along this coastline i know a lot mark a little bit further up um, for where we are today, it's been absolutely ruined and it's, it's basically formed an artificial reef because you've got guys up there who haven't got a single clue. They've been taken there by someone and they're, they're going down there with the completely wrong gear and uh, basically destroying the ground in front of them. And it, it, the, the more that goes on, the worse it will get and, and eventually it will ruin it for the anglers that do fish it properly, you know what I mean? Because you just won't be able to fish it. I mean, there's a lot of the marks up in Scotland, what Geffen that the boys go to over time time we've just got ruined and the reason they got ruined is down to braid and obviously up, up in this up in doing skate fishing that you've got really you've got to be using braid but a lot of people say about the boats and say oh that's not a way of catching them and stuff like that it is better to use it especially for fish care because instead of having a fish coming up like that over the rough ground you've got it coming over at distance with your line so you've got more chance to get it mid water by the time it gets closer in you can try and lift the fish instead of it coming up like that you know what I mean you're going to be pulling through snags and stuff but it is definitely something which I think a lot of people should obviously pay attention to because you fish in this type of conditions and like clean mixed ground it's a bit kelpie in parts while we were fishing the day um, I don't think we lost many gear I think we lost the odd wet, uh, lead and that it, obviously with rotten bottoms but at the end of the day you're going to lose leads but you it's just about fishing it properly really but uh yeah it's uh starting to cloud over a little bit they lovely weather though but hopefully we can see a tope out As you can see down there, it's what you can know, heavily known as a jellyfish. Nice uh, sight to see. Jeff won't catch it, he won't do it. He won't catch it. What we're going to do now is Geff's going to show his brush chucker trial. He's going to strip off, he's going to dive in, and he's going to wrestle the jellyfish. Go. <laughs> Always get one, didn't you? Gather, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was blue one we seen earlier looked quite good, didn't it? Geff was saying you get a lot of uh, dolphins now around this part. It's very deep water. You look across there, you got uh, a few pots out there, which, um, to be fair, they haven't really paid that much of a problem, really. As the tide was pumping right, they were pushing out to the right, and as the tide's backed off now, it's starting to wear a bit, it's, um, it's sort of like stayed where it is. The tide's starting to pick up slightly now, though, so um, no, no doubt they'll start coming around to in front of us very soon. But lovely, a lovely day. Here he is. 
Come on, big boy. See him, put him out the bag. Nice little bite then on Gav's rod. So it picked it up and um, stopped. Was it a fish, was it? Fish is dropping slack on him. Guys, right then, guys, we are about to put a fresh bait on. Have another go. Gotta keep trying. Prime time now. I think we're all knackered, but you gotta keep going, in you? Especially why? You know what I mean? The hours we've been waiting for the right time. Now you gotta fish hard. Fish hard. But, um, it's, been a, it's been an enjoyable time away. I mean, it's an over, overnight, overnight one, really, isn't it? But, uh, look at these, look at these joeys from Hookers. Lovely, lovely. So, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to cut that off bottom lip. I'm going to cut down, like so. All right, then I bring my hook point through the top end of the bait, cut down like that. So we embed the hook, it's just the hook out like that. See him out. I'm gonna just bind them on now. Oh, lovely, lovely lot of blood and scent coming out of that macro. Just watch what you, what you want. Do apologise for Geffen Durham's language. Atrocious it is. Oh, well, wow. that'll be his excuse. So we got 
It's just, ro it's just pouring out with scent, this, this bait. I mean, like ridiculous amount of scent. Oh, look at that, it's lovely. It's lovely. Oh, yeah. That's what you want. That's what you want. And then we'll put the top of the bait in there like that. Just to finish them off. One, two, three. Around the side like that. And I'll go right up through the bait. And that's, that's really what we want. So, time to get one out. Loads of scent coming out of that mackerel bait there now. Keep up. Pretty rock and roll. Dogfish, but we got a bite here. There's a little bit of weed coming in close. I had a slack line a minute ago, so it might be someone on there from that. But so hopefully, nothing. See the depth of water, and uh, compared to what we're used to, I mean, even the dogfish they seem to uh, hold their weight in this depth. It's 
dogfish. Not uh, exactly what we wanted. You tend to get a lot of these when you do this type of fishing. To be honest, you, get, you seem to get a lot of these every time you go fishing. But uh, top hook once again, that circle hook seems to be a killer for any sh other shark species. And uh, that's what we're playing with, look. But uh, easier enough to unhook. Don't need to arm them. Straight back into the dip and they'll go flying off to fight another day. There we go, straight away. Let's get another bait on. Hopefully we can get another one out. Okay then. Let's put another bait out. It's amazing really. How they take such large baits like that. I mean, that bait was probably a quarter of the size of him. Keep at it, keep at it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut along the line that I, I always cut the, slit the mackerel down just to uh, embed the hooks really. And it also stops it from spinning in the air. It makes it a bit more aer aerodynamic. You're putting large baits on. I know I was speaking to one of the uh, North Devon anglers many, many moons ago. There's a lot of uh, taupe fishing and stuff like that. And so he was having a chat with him and he was talking to me about the what, what pres bait presentation they use and stuff up there. And uh, at the end of the day, if you, especially everybody's got their own ca casting abilities, isn't they? And this is how far they can cast and stuff. And um, if you're not someone what can hit a bait, especially a large bait, a gr great distance. I mean, a lot of the venues we we fish, especially like here now, you want to be hitting that tide line when you're hitting, in the tope, you know what I mean? A lot of the guys over this neck of the woods what obviously do a lot of tope fishing and that, from obviously speaking of Geff and stuff, they're all getting out into that tide line. And it's, just, it's, it's a lot to do with fishing, um, I've got to be honest, because if you're going like, um, especially like places like Bristol Channel and that, sometimes by, by hitting that tide line, it can pay in results of catching fish and not catching fish. I've had it on numerous occasions over the years. Just a, just that little bit extra distance seems to go a long way at times. And I'm not saying especially here. I know Cookie used to fish this coastline a lot over the years. And um, there's marks which he would literally lob the, lob the bait 40 yards. Um, Geff was telling me earlier on about a mark he went to and he couldn't believe it. He, he, put, he caught a pollock, about two and a half pounds, literally put it on um, his hooks, lobbed it about 40 yards, and within uh, the space of moments, fish. Gav's just had a little bite. But uh, we just we just got to keep going, guys. At the end of the day, we just got to keep going and going and going. Unfortunately, so uh, these mackerel are very very nice, full of scent, which you want. The wire is is a must, and I repeat, a must when you're doing any type of this type of fishing, spur dogs, anything with like crit, critter teeth. Um, you re you really need to be using it. I've, we've only got about 18 inches. You're not, you haven't got to use it for your whole trace line. It just obviously stops. It gives a, gives it gives the bait movement still, but stops anything uh, from tearing through it. I mean, taupe and stuff like that. They've got very sharp mouths, and uh, last thing you want to be doing is using mono and getting bitten off. You know what I mean? That's uh, put this one in here now. He's up through the side. So there's that one there. So we'll ping him out quickly and uh, hopefully we can get another fish out. Hopefully it's not a dogfish. It'd be nice to see a taupe. <laughs> As you see, I've collected a lot of my line, which uh, I've been using for rotten bottoms, but it will be put into a bag for later on. 
and uh, when I was using them earlier on and uh, be taken back in the rubbish obviously you, you, you go in any place like this is always worth leaving no footprints as they say anything you've got take it with you any spare like uh, mackerel and bait and stuff like that chugging the sea trying to protect the environment from plastics and stuff as much as we can really so let's get one out scissors yeah little knife no But we've got about an hour left to fish in. Let's try and make the most of it, really. Boat just passed in, so I won't uh, cast out yet. Last thing I want to be doing is uh, hitting that. If he stays there, he's going to end up getting hit with a lead because that's where we're casting. <laughs> you, guys, you just can't write it. You mean all the sea they've got, and um, they'll soon move. What's your head, mate? Oh, your little tips out. saying then he said you're fishing for one big fish here in a minute yeah. you won't get like packs coming through yeah he's so west wales is a one oh fish did you see that did you see that balloon? Mate, I'll bow that down with my GoPro. Get a few other gifts out of it. Fuck. I just got like out there. Big balloon bass come up and smashed it. That'll be on my GoPro, that. Yeah. I thought I had it on because I've been in a big splash, big balloon bass. Coming then. So, so the lovely chap next to us, well-known all-round top angler, really. See if see some of his catches on social media, and that seems a nice guy. I know a few of the boys know met him before. He's uh, kindly give us some uh, fresh mackerel. What they've got, they're literally having the last cast and um, off they're going, but uh, we're still trying, we're still trying. Gav's locked up there at the minute, unfortunately.
son. Come on, boy. He's just kept tension away. Yeah? He's done very well to get that out because that was jammed right up. He's uh, he's in. So white dogfish. Eel. Hus. Eel. Hus. Eel. Very dark. Open coast eel, love them. Dark as you like, look. What beautiful looking fish. Biggest fish of the day so far, well done Gav. Yeah. Lovely known as a Congo. Hold him up a minute, Gaff, will ya? Huh? Top hook circle. He's just going to show them circles nail them. They do nail them. Now, you see Gav's going straight for the pliers. The circles straight straight in the mouth. Had a few half decent, like upper 20s tote fishing in North Devon over the years. So, a bit of fresh bait. Just got to hope for the, for the one now, haven't we? Just got to hope for that fish. Just hope for that big one now. Watch your head, boys. <laughs> well, okay folks, that was our day. Pretty, uh, not target species, but um, had a few fish out, but you can't win them all. If the fish ain't there, you're not, uh, you're not going to catch them. But uh, yeah, good day on the North Wales coastline. Definitely be back at some point. But uh, until then, let's get these baits on and get up that cliff. the next time. Nightmare, but it's a long way, it's a long drive home. <laughs> Absolute nightmare, but uh, <laughs> sure we back to fight another day. Fishing guys can't win them all, can you? Unfortunately. <sighs> trouble 
of wire. Normally I'll just cut cut my hooks off and uh, that would be it. Just slide the bait off and ready to go. Unfortunately with the wire, there's nothing wrong with it. Quick dip in the sink when you get home and you'll be able to use them for another day, another day, you know. There it goes. Till next time guys, take lines.